Each year, there are hundreds of Bigfoot sightings across the country. It got pretty hairy in that night. If I feel compromised or I feel like that we're in danger, I'll go right into the woods and attempt to approach these things. The cannery site is around this point. How has it traveled this far to be here? In the freezing February of 1994, Miles and his special ops team were deep in the Alaskan wilderness on a training exercise when something extraordinary happened. Their mission was to master strategic reconnaissance, sneaking into a target zone, observing quietly, and exiting without a trace. But what they discovered forced them to abandon their mission and return in haste. What could they have found that made them retreat so abruptly? Let us uncover the hidden truths that the forest holds. Secrets the government doesn't want you to know. The Great Alaskan Winter Expedition. Their gear was suited for the harsh Alaskan winter. The team, composed of 11 members, was equipped with cross-country skis for movement, backpacks stocked with tents and meals ready to eat, known as MREs, and enough warm clothing to withstand the freezing temperatures. Their planned route took them from near Fairbanks, heading eastward past Eelson Air Force Base and through a landscape that included steep ridges, deep valleys, marshy lands, and dense forests. As they traveled, they came across a particularly dense forest area. Here, Miles decided it was crucial to check if they could navigate through it or if they needed to find a way around. He and two other team members switched to snowshoes and ventured into the forest to explore further. Deep within, they made a remarkable discovery. They found unusually large footprints in the snow. Each print was about 18, 19 inches long and spaced about five feet apart. The depth and clarity of these footprints were surprising. Whatever had made them could move in a way that was unusually efficient. The creature lifted its legs high off the ground, creating distinct individual footprints without any drag marks between them. This was in stark contrast to one of the soldiers who, attempting to mimic the stride, removed his snowshoes and tried to walk in the snow. He quickly sank up to his knees and his movements were clumsy and slow, leaving a messy trail with lots of scattered snow around. Stay tuned for more. These tracks in the snow hinted at the presence of something quite extraordinary. Perhaps it was a creature native to these parts, capable of moving through deep snow with unusual agility and speed. This unexpected encounter added an intriguing twist to their routine training mission, turning it into a first-hand experience of the unexpected and unexplained wonders that Alaska's wild and vast terrain could hold. The pristine nature of the tracks and the effortless movement they suggested left the team pondering over the capabilities of Alaska's wildlife, and it added a fascinating layer to their reconnaissance mission in the wild. The team called over their sergeant, the best tracker among them. While everyone was skilled in tracking, he was on another level. What they found this time was hard to believe. They discovered footprints that were 18 inches long with clear toe impressions, proposing something huge made them. By examining the size of the stride and how deep the prints went into the snow, they guessed the creature could be around nine feet tall and weigh between 500 and 700 pounds. These were just rough estimates, but the uniqueness of the find was undeniable they decided to follow the tracks to learn more about this large creature. As they followed the trail, they learned a lot about how the creature moved through its environment. The tracks weaved through the forest, sticking to the tops of ridges and moving through the trees, skillfully avoiding open areas. It crossed over the lower sections of ridges, suggesting it knew the area well and how to stay out of sight. The creature's path showed it had similar tactics to the team, using the natural landscape to remain unseen. This intrigued the team greatly, drawing them deeper into the exploration. The team had to work their way through deep snow, which slowed their progress significantly. They were well equipped with cross-country skis and had brought along snowshoes for the particularly thick snow areas. After several hours of tracking, as daylight began to fade, they decided it was time to set up camp. They prepared their sleeping area, cooked their meals using boiled water, and settled into their sleeping bags for warmth. By 9 or 10 p.m., the camp was quiet, with most of the team asleep under the clear, cold sky. Suddenly, around 4 a.m., Miles was awakened by a distant sound that seemed out of place. It sounded like a howl, but had a roaring quality to it, echoing off the surrounding hills. 
Initially, he thought it might be a wolf, common in the Alaskan wilderness. But this sound was different. It was deeper, more resonant, suggesting something larger. He stayed awake, listening as the forest returned to silence. But the quiet didn't last. About 15 minutes later, there was another sound, this time much closer. It started faintly but grew louder as if something big was moving through the forest towards their camp. Initially, Miles thought it might be a moose since it was the time of year when bears were typically hibernating. The noises continued getting closer and closer until they suddenly stopped about 100 feet from the camp. The sudden silence was almost as startling as the noise itself, leaving Miles and possibly others who might have awakened to wonder about the large unseen visitor lurking just out of sight. And that's not all. The night fell completely silent. The little wind that had been blowing stopped without a trace. Given it was midwinter, there were no natural sounds like frogs to break the silence. It was eerily quiet, the kind of quiet that felt almost heavy, pressing down on them. Miles, the team leader, paid close attention because he knew that whatever had been approaching them hadn't left. It had just stopped advancing. In his gut, he felt it was out there, maybe just standing and waiting. The sound wasn't of something coming towards them or moving away, but rather moving back and forth through the brush. It was a loud rustling, with branches breaking under its weight, creating a continuous disturbance. This activity started stirring the rest of the team. One by one, they unzipped their tents, poking their heads out to see if anyone else was hearing the same unsettling noises. Miles unzipped his tent too and listened intently. This back and forth movement went on for a few minutes and then abruptly stopped, plunging the area back into deep silence. However, about a minute later, they were all startled by a loud howl that morphed into a roar, almost a scream, the kind of sound that made you remember why the wild is no place for the faint-hearted. After a night filled with strange sounds, the team's encounter with the unknown was just starting, leading to more strange events, strange night sounds in the Alaskan wilderness. Being on a training mission, they had no live ammunition with them, as there was no expected need for actual combat. Feeling vulnerable and outmatched, they collectively decided not to pursue the tracks any further. As dawn was starting to break, they heard another unsettling sound, a tree being forcefully pushed over. They saw the tops of the trees sway dramatically, followed by a loud cracking sound as a tree came crashing down. This incident convinced them it was time to leave as soon as possible. Although it was only about 4 a.m., they started to pack up their gear, deciding to wait for the sun to fully rise which wouldn't be until about 8.30 to 9 a.m., given it was mid-February. Before they left, Miles and another soldier decided to take one last look into the forest where they had heard the noises. They discovered more large footprints similar to the ones they had seen before, and an area where the snow was packed down, suggesting the creature had been moving back and forth there. They also found a broken pine tree, about 12 inches in diameter, which had been snapped cleanly about halfway up its 35-foot height. But wait, there's even more to it. The sight of the cleanly broken tree and the fresh footprints added a final layer of intensity to their experience. These were clear signs of a large and powerful creature, one that they had no interest in encountering without proper preparation. The evidence they gathered was compelling, but also a bit intimidating. It was a tangible reminder of the wild and unpredictable nature of the wilderness they had ventured into. With these thoughts in mind, the team unanimously agreed to keep this incident among themselves. Miles, understanding the implications of their encounter, was particularly firm on this. He didn't want any rumors or exaggerated tales to circulate beyond their group. His priority was the safety and focus of his team, and dwelling on what they had encountered could only distract from their missions in the future. The decision to stay silent about their experience was not just about maintaining professional discipline, it was also about respecting the unpredictable power of nature they had witnessed. They knew that some things were better left unexplored, especially when they were outmatched by the questions of the natural world. Thus, as they left the campsite that morning, the quiet acceptance of their decision marked a profound respect for the untamed wild they had briefly but intensely encountered. They carried with them a renewed sense of caution and a deep appreciation for the serene but formidable nature of Alaska's wilderness, a place where the line between observation and danger is thin and often blurred.
After wrapping up their training mission with two more nights in the wilderness, Miles and his team chose to keep quiet about the unusual occurrences they had witnessed. They agreed that it would be best not to discuss these events back at command. They figured it would only complicate things, possibly leading to questions they weren't prepared to answer or discussions they preferred to avoid. Interestingly, there's a link to another individual familiar with wilderness survival, Anthony, who lives in Northeastern Washington. He attended the Fairchild Air Force Survival School, known for its rigorous training programs. This school teaches students essential survival skills, including how to read and use topographical maps that provide detailed information about the terrain. These maps help navigators find their way using a compass, stay hydrated, travel safely in the wilderness, and identify potentially dangerous animals. These maps are quite unique. Alongside the usual illustrations of moose, bears, mountain lions, bobcats, and badgers, animals one might expect to encounter in such environments, there's an unexpected addition. Included among these illustrations is one of Sasquatch, also known as Bigfoot. This inclusion on a government-issued map used for survival training is quite surprising and intriguing. It suggests a certain acknowledgement of the creature's existence, which is not commonly found in official materials. This piece of information had a particular impact on Miles. He often found himself thinking about the encounter they had during their mission. The presence of Bigfoot on an official map sparked his curiosity further about what they might have actually encountered had they followed those unusual tracks deeper into the wilderness. Deep down, Miles felt strongly that the creature they had tracked was possibly a Sasquatch. The footprints they discovered were unusually large and distinct, unlike those of any typical wildlife known to inhabit the area. These tracks were so clean and well-defined that they suggested the presence of a creature adept at moving stealthily through its natural habitat. This combined with the illustration on the survival map made Miles consider the possibility that there might indeed be undiscovered or less understood creatures lurking in the vast expanses of wilderness. And that's not the end of the story. The entire incident left a deep impression on Miles and his team. They often reflected on their experiences and the broader implications of encountering such unexplained phenomena. While they were trained to survive and navigate through the wild, this particular experience underscored how much remains unknown and unexplored in nature. The decision to keep their encounter private stemmed from a mix of caution and a deep-seated respect for the unpredictable nature of the wild. They recognized that some things, particularly those that are not fully understood or explained, are better left untouched. This respect for the wilderness was a significant takeaway from their mission. Miles often revisited the memory of those pristine, large footprints in the snow, considering what adventures and discoveries lay beyond the paths they trod. Each team member carried forward a heightened sense of awareness and a renewed appreciation for the untamed and undiscovered parts of the world. It was an experience that subtly shifted their perspectives on the wilderness and its many inhabitants, known and unknown. They understood that the wilderness wasn't just a place to challenge one's survival skills, but also a realm where the limits of human knowledge are constantly tested against the vast unknowns of nature. Interested by the big footprints and odd noises, the team's curiosity grew about what could be in the wilderness, making them look into the story of Bigfoot. Tracking the incredible Bigfoot legend, Bigfoot, often called Sasquatch, is a well-known figure in North American folklore. This creature is typically portrayed as a tall, hairy, two-legged humanoid. The roots of the Bigfoot legend are deeply embedded in the stories passed down by Native American tribes across North America. These traditional tales often depict a strange figure that dwells in the wilderness, sometimes referred to as a wild man or hairy giant. The tale of Bigfoot as we know it today started to take shape around the late 1950s. A pivotal moment came in 1958 when a construction worker named Jerry Crew found unusually large human-like footprints at Bluff Creek in California. After Crew's discovery was featured in the Humboldt Times newspaper, the name Bigfoot was born and it quickly caught the public's attention. This sparked a wave of reported sightings and footprint finds that continues to this day. Descriptions of Bigfoot suggest a formidable, muscular being cloaked in dark fur with heights ranging from six to nine feet, and in some stories, as tall as 15 feet. 
The footprints associated with Bigfoot are usually about 24 inches long. People often report that the creature emits a strong, unpleasant odor and moves through the woods with remarkable stealth. Occasionally, witnesses also report hearing eerie screams or whistles in the wilderness. But wait, there's even more. One of the most iconic pieces of Bigfoot evidence is a short film made by Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin in 1967, near the same Bluff Creek area. Their footage allegedly captures a glimpse of Bigfoot in motion. This film has become legendary, sparking endless debate and scrutiny, with many considering it to be nothing more than a clever fake. Looking at the broader cultural context, the Bigfoot legend can be seen as a blend of native myths and European stories about wild men. Among North American indigenous communities, stories of creatures akin to Bigfoot are common and vary from tribe to tribe. For example, the Sitsales people of Canada know the creature as Saskets, translating to wild men. Likewise, numerous other tribes in the Pacific Northwest share similar tales, weaving Bigfoot-like figures into their cultural and spiritual narratives. The fascination with Bigfoot goes beyond mere curiosity. It taps into our love of the unexplained and our intrinsic connection to nature. Over the years, Bigfoot has not only been a subject of folklore and casual campfire stories, but has also been considered in discussions about environmental conservation and biodiversity, reflecting the creature's role in highlighting the questions that still exist in the wild spaces of the world. Over the decades, the portrayal of Bigfoot in popular culture has gone through some interesting changes. Back in the 1970s and 1980s, Bigfoot was mainly seen as a fearsome creature in horror films and thrilling adventure books. But as we moved into the 1990s and 2000s, perception shifted. Bigfoot began to be seen not just as a mythical beast, but as a symbol for environmentalism and the preservation of untouched wilderness. The idea evolved from fearing Bigfoot to seeing it as a misunderstood being that needs our protection and understanding. Despite many reported sightings and even some physical clues like footprints and strands of hair, most scientists are still not convinced about Bigfoot's existence. They often suggest that what people are seeing could just be other known animals, like bears, mistaken for something more strange or simple pranks. However, some researchers, like physical anthropologist Jeff Meldrum and Grover Krantz, believe there's enough intriguing evidence to warrant a deeper look. For instance, Meldrum has examined footprint casts which he argues show unique anatomical details that could point to an unknown creature. When people report seeing Bigfoot, they often mention a very strong, bad smell. There are also accounts of finding strange structures made of branches and logs that look intentionally assembled. Some even speculate that Bigfoot might have ways of burying its dead, which would help explain why no one has ever found a body. Keep watching to find out more on this. In places like Oregon and Washington, in the Pacific Northwest, Bigfoot has become more than just a story. It's a cultural icon representing the wild and strange nature of the region. It's so popular that it has become a mascot for some communities and has even influenced local laws that aim to protect it. As the years have passed, Bigfoot has been featured in a wide variety of media. You can see Bigfoot in documentaries, reality TV shows, commercials, and even in cartoons for kids. This wide-ranging presence helps keep the legend alive, fueled by new sightings, ongoing debates, and the sheer fun of the unknown. Bigfoot continues to be a captivating figure in North American folklore. Its roots can be traced back to the rich oral traditions of indigenous peoples and have been molded over time by both old tales and new media. While there is no concrete evidence to prove Bigfoot's existence, the combination of historical accounts, ongoing public interest, and its emblematic status in wilderness conservation ensures that Bigfoot remains a compelling symbol of the natural world's unanswered questions. This blend of history, culture, and curiosity keeps the Bigfoot legend going strong, making it a permanent part of North American cultural heritage. While stories of Bigfoot sparked their interest, they were not the only ones facing the unknown, the legendary Loch Ness Monster. Bigfoot isn't the only legendary creature that captures our imagination. Across the world, various cultures have their own versions of strange creatures, and one of the most famous is the Loch Ness Monster, also known affectionately as Nessie. 
This creature is said to live in Loch Ness, a vast, deep lake in the Scottish Highlands. The tales of Nessie are deeply woven into local folklore, with stories of sightings and strange encounters going back centuries. The story of Nessie stretches all the way back to the 6th century. A story from that time tells of St. Columba, an Irish monk, who came across a dangerous creature in the River Ness. According to the tale, the creature was attacking a man, but when Columba intervened, commanding the beast to back off, it reportedly listened, leaving the man safe. This encounter is often cited as the earliest recorded sighting of the Loch Ness Monster. The modern fascination with Nessie began to take shape in the 20th century. In 1933, after a new road offered an unobstructed view of Loch Ness, a local couple reported seeing a huge creature making a commotion in the water. Their story made it to the Inverness Courier and quickly captured the public's attention. This spike in interest led to more people coming forward with their own sightings and even prompted some to try to capture evidence. One of the most famous pieces of supposed evidence came in 1934 when a London surgeon named Robert Kenneth Wilson took a photograph that seemed to show a creature with a long neck poking out of the water. This photo, known as the surgeon's photograph, became iconic. However, it was later exposed as a hoax, which dampened some enthusiasm, but didn't end the fascination with Nessie. And there's even more to it. Over the years, there have been many other reports of seeing Nessie. Descriptions generally portray a creature with a long neck and one or more humps emerging from the lake. Some people have speculated that Nessie could be a plesiosaur, a type of ancient marine reptile surviving in the depths of Loch Ness. However, this idea faces skepticism, especially since Loch Ness was completely frozen during the last ice age, and its chilly waters today seem an unlikely home for a prehistoric marine reptile. Despite the doubts and debunked hoaxes, interest in the Loch Ness monster remains strong. Tourists flock to Loch Ness in hopes of catching a glimpse of Nessie, and the local community embraces the legend, which has become a part of their cultural and economic landscape. Books, documentaries, and scientific studies continue to explore the possibility of Nessie's existence, keeping the legend alive. Despite no real proof, the Loch Ness Monster, or Nessie, has become a permanent fixture in Scottish folklore and a big reason people visit the area. Many teams have tried to uncover the truth about Nessie using modern technology like sonar and underwater cameras. During the 1960s, several British universities carried out studies using sonar, which detected large moving objects underwater, but they couldn't conclusively identify these objects. In 1975, an expedition led by the Boston's Academy of Applied Science even captured an underwater image that looked like a flipper, but this photo sparked much debate and wasn't widely accepted as proof. Many people think that the reported sightings of the Loch Ness Monster are just cases of mistaken identity, pranks, or natural phenomena like seiches, waves caused by changes in water temperature. For example, some reported sightings of Nessie later turned out to be otters, seals, or just logs floating in the water. The tale of Nessie has also been fueled by several well-known hoaxes. In the 1930s, a big game hunter named Marmaduke Wetherill was hired by the Daily Mail newspaper to hunt for the monster. He claimed to have found large footprints by the shore, which later turned out to be fabricated with a stuffed hippopotamus foot. Also, the famous surgeon's photograph, which supposedly showed Nessie, was later revealed to be a hoax involving a toy submarine. Stay tuned for more information on this story. Through the years, the legend of Nessie has been kept alive by media coverage, books, and films. The creature has become a symbol of Scottish folklore attracting both tourists and researchers to Loch Ness. Interest in the Loch Ness Monster continues to be strong in the 21st century, with new sightings reported regularly and ongoing efforts to find some sort of truth behind the legend. Despite the skepticism and the lack of solid evidence, the Loch Ness Monster remains a captivating topic for people worldwide. Whether seen as a real creature or just a fun story, Nessie is an important part of Scotland's cultural heritage, representing our love for exploring the unknown aspects of the natural world. This enduring curiosity keeps the legend of Nessie alive, making it a beloved part of Scottish tradition and a fascinating topic for those interested in the unexplained phenomena of our planet. Stories of Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster are just the start, 
Many places have legends of mythical creatures that continue to amaze us. Legendary creatures around the globe. The world of myth and folklore is filled with legendary creatures that go beyond the well-known ones like Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster. These beings come from ancient cultures and have been sparking our imaginations for centuries. Let's dive into a deeper exploration of some really famous mythical creatures. The Chimera, a creature from Greek tales, breathes fire and is quite the sight. Imagine a beast with a lion's body and head, a second head of a goat sticking out from its back, and a snake for a tail. It sounds like something out of a fantasy book, right? This fearsome mix-up of animals was eventually defeated by the hero Bellerophon. He flew on the winged horse Pegasus and cleverly used a spear with a lead tip to melt inside the chimera, stopping it in its tracks. Then there's the phoenix, a magnificent bird that symbolizes fresh starts and coming back stronger. It's a common figure in Greek, Egyptian, and Arabic stories. This bird is known for its vibrant feathers and its incredible life cycle, where it bursts into flames and then comes back to life from its ashes. The phoenix is all about the endless cycle of life and the idea of living forever. Centaurs from Greek mythology are quite unique too. They have the upper body of a human and the lower body of a horse. These creatures came from Nephili, a cloud nymph, and Ixion, a mortal man. While often shown as wild, not all centaurs were troublemakers. Take Chiron, for example, a wise and noble centaur who taught many Greek heroes like Achilles and Hercules. But wait, there's even more to it. Dragons are famous across various cultures worldwide. In Western stories, they are often fire-breathing reptiles with wings and four legs. Over in the East, dragons are viewed as smart, kind creatures that look more like serpents. No matter where they're from, dragons are always seen as mighty and impressive. Medusa is another well-known monster from Greek myths. She was once a beautiful woman, but was transformed by the goddess Athena into a gorgon with snake hair after a bad encounter with Poseidon. Just one look at Medusa could turn you into stone. She met her end at the hands of Perseus, who cleverly used a mirrored shield to see her without looking directly and cut off her head. Now let's talk about the manacore a monster from Persian tales that later became part of Greek and medieval stories. It looks like a lion, but has a human face with three rows of sharp teeth and a tail that shoots poisonous spikes. The manacore was feared for its hunger for humans and its ability to harm with its tail from a distance. The basilisk, often called the king of serpents in European legends, is quite a fascinating character. Picture this, a serpent with a rooster's head and dragon-like wings. Pretty wild, right? It's said this creature could end someone's life just by looking at them or through its toxic breath. Back in the day, stories often told of its defeat using a mirror to reflect its deadly gaze back into itself. Another quirky bit from those stories is the use of weasels to combat it, as they were thought to be resistant to its poison. The roc, a massive bird from Arabic stories, was believed to be so strong it could pick up elephants. Described by famous travelers like Marco Polo and Ibn Battuta, this bird supposedly lived near the Indian Ocean. It's the kind of creature that sparks the imagination with its strength, embodying essence of unexplored lands. Then there's the Minotaur, a classic figure from Greek mythology. This beast with a man's body and a bull's head was stuck in the labyrinth, a massive, confusing structure on the island of Crete. The hero Theseus finally defeated it, a tale that symbolizes overcoming challenges through cleverness and courage rather than just muscle. The Kraken from Scandinavian tales often takes the form of a gigantic octopus or squid. Legends say it lurked off the coasts of Norway and Greenland, causing havoc for sailors by pulling ships down into the deep sea. The Kraken has captured the fascination of many and continues to be a popular figure in tales and movies depicting sea monsters. And that's not all. The Hydra, another creature from Greek myths, was a serpent-like beast with many heads. If you cut one off, two more would spring up in its place. Hercules, in one of his famous 12 labors, finally defeated it by burning the stumps to prevent new heads from growing. This story highlights the theme of resilience and finding smart solutions to seemingly impossible problems. The Sphinx, with the body of a lion and a human's head, is known in both Greek and Egyptian myths. In the Greek version, it sat outside Thebes, challenging passers-by with a riddle and devouring those who couldn't answer correctly. 
It met its match in Oedipus, who answered the riddle and saved the city, emphasizing the power of wit over strength. These mythical creatures from various cultures not only serve to entertain with their extraordinary tales, but also reflect human attempts to make sense of the world around them. They symbolize the fears, challenges, and aspirations of ancient peoples and continue to be a vibrant part of storytelling, showing how these ancient fears and fantasies are still relevant and engaging today. Could the tales of covert operations in the Alaskan wilderness be more than just training exercises? Could there be hidden truths buried beneath the frost and fir trees, possibly linked to international intrigues? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more.